The Isa Brown genetic adventure, a trip to the past? Sometimes, necessity sharpens ingenuity, right? Imagine this situation. We know that the Isa Brown laying hen, that marvel of egg production, is the result of crossing breeds like the Rhode Island Red and the Rhode Island White. It would be a dream to have those original breeds in our own backyard, wouldn't it? But what if those Rhode Island Reds or Whites are hard to find in our region, perhaps even impossible? That's where genetics, that fascinating Pandora's box, poses an intriguing question. If I have an Isa Brown rooster and an Isa Brown hen, both carrying the genes of those prized breeds in their lineage, could crossing them, a family cross, an inbred cross, become a key to unlocking that genetic past? Could we, generation after generation, select their offspring, looking for those intense reddish feathers or that pure white, that particular confirmation, trying to rewind genetic time to reconstruct something similar to the Rhode Island red and white? In this video, we'll delve into a topic that often generates debate, inbreeding in our chickens. Is it a powerful tool to preserve or even recreate certain family traits? Or is it a path full of hidden risks? Discover in this video the importance of inbreeding in the search for specific characteristics and join us as we explore whether this genetic regression is truly possible. Get ready to unveil the secrets your chicken's genetics might be holding. Inbreeding, or breeding among relatives, occurs when we pair hens and roosters that are close family. Imagine you're crossing siblings, parents with offspring, or even cousins. It's like choosing mates who share common grandparents or parents, instead of pairing birds that have no known relation in your coop. To begin our exploration, it's crucial to remember that our Isa Brown hens, those tireless layers, are actually the result of a strategic cross between the Rhode Island Red and the Rhode Island White. So even though we mainly see that characteristic brown plumage, fragments of the genetic code of their red and white grandparents persist within their DNA. It's as if they carry a family recipe book that still contains the original instructions for baking an intense red cake or a pure white one. These genes don't fade. They rearrange themselves in each new generation. What exactly does breeding among relatives mean when we talk about our birds? Well, inbreeding simply refers to pairing roosters and hens that share a close kinship. Imagine, for example, deciding that a rooster and a hen born from the same parents will reproduce with each other. Or even going a step further and crossing a father with a daughter, or a mother with a son. Crosses between uncles and nieces, or first cousins, would also fall into this category. The key here is that the chosen pairs share direct common ancestors, instead of being birds with no known family connection in our coop. How could we use this strategy to look for those traces of the genetic past in our chicks? The answer lies in the power of careful observation and selection. Every time we cross related Issa Browns, the next generation will present a diversity of characteristics. Some chicks will look very much like their parents, but others might start to show hints of their Rhode Island red or white ancestors. It's as if we're looking for small signals that point the way to that genetic past. We might notice a chick with a more pronounced reddish tone in its feathers, or perhaps one with immaculate white. Even their body shape or certain temperament traits might remind us of the descriptions of the original breeds. Therefore, the key is to be genetic detectives, identifying and choosing only those individuals for the next generation who carry the most promising signals. And it's that, by performing inbred crosses, we seek a particular genetic phenomenon, the concentration of genes and an increase in homozygosity. When two related birds mate, there's a higher probability that they share the same versions of certain genes. As a result, their offspring will have a greater chance of inheriting two identical copies of those genes, one from each parent. We call this homozygosity. Think of the gene responsible for red color. If two Isa Browns carry a copy of that gene from their Rhode Island red ancestors, when crossed, some of their chicks could inherit two copies of that red gene, manifesting a more intensely red plumage. By continuously selecting birds with desired traits and breeding them with each other, we are essentially strengthening the presence of those specific genes in our line. However, along with this potential to concentrate desired traits, we must be very aware of a significant risk, inbreeding depression. All our birds, like all living beings, carry some recessive genes in their DNA that can be harmful if present in a double dose. Normally, when crossing unrelated birds, the probability of both parents transmitting the same copy of a harmful recessive gene is low. However, in inbred crosses, this probability increases significantly. This can translate into various problems for our birds, such as lower fertility, increased susceptibility to diseases, smaller size and vigor in chicks, and even reduced egg production. It's as if, by focusing too much on a small part of our genetic pool, 
We also increase the possibility of amplifying any weaknesses that may exist in that lineage. At this point, it's natural to wonder if this genetic regression is truly a faithful reconstruction of the original breeds, or rather, an approximation. While the idea of bringing back a pure Rhode Island red or white through Isa Browns is tempting, we must be realistic. Genetic recombination, that random process that occurs in each reproduction, makes it very unlikely to obtain an exact genetic copy of the ancestral breeds, as they existed when the parental lines of the Isa Brown were created. It is more feasible that, after many generations of selection and inbred crosses, we can develop lines of birds that closely resemble the Rhode Island red and white in terms of their appearance, temperament, and perhaps some productive characteristics. However, their internal genetic composition might have taken a slightly different path, making them something similar but not identical to their ancestors. Of course, embarking on this genetic adventure forces us to carefully consider the ethical and practical implications of inbreeding our chickens. From an ethical perspective, the welfare of our animals must be paramount. If we observe an increase in health problems or deformities as a result of these crosses, we must question whether continuing down that path is the right thing to do. Practically, carrying out a successful inbreeding program requires meticulous management. We will need to maintain detailed genealogical records to know which birds are related and avoid overly close crosses that could exacerbate inbreeding depression. Additionally, sufficient space is required to manage different lines of birds and perform controlled crosses, as well as a good dose of patience, as this process takes time and dedication. Finally, a basic understanding of the principles of genetic inheritance will help us make informed decisions about which birds to cross and which to select. The importance of genealogical records and individual identification, the foundation of everything. For any breeder venturing into inbreeding, whether to fix traits or to attempt to reconstruct breeds, keeping accurate genealogical records is absolutely fundamental. Imagine that each hen and each rooster in your backyard is a link in a genetic chain. Without knowing who is whose offspring, who is whose sibling, or from which specific cross they came, selection becomes a guessing game. A good record-keeping system allows us to clearly identify each bird. This can be done with numbered leg bands, wing bands, or any method that ensures we know the identity of each individual. Know their lineage. Knowing the parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents of each chick is crucial for planning crosses. We can calculate the inbreeding coefficient, which indicates the degree of relatedness and the risk of genetic problems. Make informed decisions. Having this information allows us to decide which crosses are most suitable to enhance desired traits while avoiding breeding birds with overly close relationships. It helps us to freshen the blood when necessary or to intensify a specific trait in a controlled manner. Detect and eliminate problems. If genetic problems appear, such as malformations or low fertility, Records allow us to trace the origin of the problem and remove individuals carrying those undesirable genes from our breeding program. In short, records are not just paperwork, they are the genetic map of our chickens, an indispensable tool for the success and sustainability of any selective breeding program. Finally, we cannot talk about genetics and selection without mentioning two external factors that are as important as the genes themselves, nutrition and the environment. Imagine you have a chick with the genetic potential to be a perfect Rhode Island Red, with the most intense reddish plumage and the best conformation. If this chick does not receive a balanced and complete diet, rich in proteins, vitamins, and minerals, or if it lives in a stressful, damp, or diseased coop, that genetic potential simply won't be able to fully express itself. Proper nutrition not only ensures optimal growth and development, but also directly influences gene expression. For example, certain nutrients are vital for the formation of intensely colored feathers or for eggshell quality. Similarly, a clean environment with enough space, ventilation, and protection from weather and predators reduces stress in the birds, allowing their immune systems to function better and their energy to be directed towards growth and production rather than fighting adverse conditions. Therefore, even if we have the perfect genetic lineage, the success of our genetic regression project will largely depend on providing our birds with the best possible conditions. A good breeder knows that genes are just the seed. The care we give those seeds is what allows the tree to grow strong and bear the desired fruits. It's useful to consider whether there are alternatives or approaches that could complement or even be more direct than inbreeding Isa Browns, especially if the original breeds are inaccessible. If our ultimate goal is to obtain birds with the characteristics of Rhode Island Red and White, the most direct option, if available to us, would be to acquire pure specimens of these breeds from specialized breeders. However, 
If the Rhode Island Red is not available in our region, or if the local genetics are not the best, we could explore a complementary strategy, introducing a breed like the New Hampshire. The New Hampshire is a breed that developed from the Rhode Island Red, sharing much of its genetic lineage and many of its desirable characteristics, such as reddish plumage and good egg production. By crossing a New Hampshire with our Isa Browns, which already carry Rhode Island Red genes, we would be reinforcing and concentrating those red traits without relying on the original breed. This could help us get closer to our goal more quickly and, at the same time, allow us to strengthen hybrid vigor in our line. By introducing new blood, though genetically related, we can counteract the inbreeding depression that would arise from crossing only Isa Browns with each other. Then, we could apply selective inbreeding within the new generations to fix the desired New Hampshire and Rhode Island red traits. This strategy offers a balance between seeking specific characteristics and maintaining the health and vitality of the flock. Throughout the history of animal breeding, inbreeding has been a tool used to establish and maintain the distinctive characteristics of many breeds. We find examples in the breeding of dogs, horses, and other species, where crosses among relatives have been performed to preserve a particular appearance or a specific ability. However, these cases also teach us about the importance of careful management to mitigate the risks of inbreeding depression. In the modern poultry industry, the general trend leans towards creating hybrids, like the Issa Brown, which leverage the hybrid vigor resulting from crossing genetically diverse pure lines or breeds. Therefore, finding direct examples of the reconstruction of pure breeds from hybrids through inbreeding may be less common, although the underlying genetic principles remain relevant. Ultimately, the journey of trying to unlock the ancestral genes of our Isa Browns through inbred crosses is a fascinating test of ingenuity and perseverance. It's a journey that invites us to become true genetic explorers, searching among the plumage of each chick for the traces of a glorious past. While the possibility of reconstructing something close to the Rhode Island red and white is a theoretically achievable goal, it demands unwavering dedication, meticulous observation, and exemplary management to circumvent the risks of inbreeding depression. This path is not a magic formula, but a complex dance between hope and science, where each selection brings us closer to or further from our ideal. However, as we've seen, we are not limited solely to crosses between direct Issa Brown relatives. The strategic inclusion of genetically close breeds, like the New Hampshire, can be a clever shortcut that allows us both to approach the desired characteristics and to strengthen the vitality of our flock. In the end, beyond obtaining a specific breed, what this experiment offers us is a deep understanding of genetics and a reminder that, even on our own farms, nature holds secrets that, with patience and knowledge, we can begin to unveil. If you liked the video, leave me a like and a comment. You can also share this video in your ornamental poultry community and subscribe if you're not yet part of this community. To your success, fellow breeder. Until next time.